Hey everyone, welcome to Anaheim Park Tourists. In today's video, we're giving you our top 10 walking distance hotels to Disneyland. Now, this was a very tough list we put together and it includes only hotels that we have stayed at since we've started the channel. And that is about 33 hotels at the time of filming this video. We picked a variety of budget-minded hotels and more moderately priced hotels to fit all different types of budgets. Most notably absent from our list is the Candy Cane, and the Candy Cane has been under construction since the shutdown in 2020, and we look forward to staying there in the future, and we're positive they would make the list. And we're gonna first start off with an honorable mention, and that is Hotel Lulu. Uh, we really wanted to put the Lulu in our list, but there just wasn't room and there's so many great choices. And what we liked about the Lulu is it is a hotel, so the corridors are on the interior. It is one of the cheapest hotels in the Disneyland area. We didn't have the best stay there and our room was not in the best of conditions. However, we know other people have stayed there and had great stays. So what we do is we just encourage you to at least look at the hotel if you're on a tighter budget, but wanna stay in a hotel, read those reviews, see what those reviews are saying. If the reviews are trending good in the last six months, you're probably okay to stay there. Now on to our top 10 and take in mind, this list is in no particular order. And the first hotel we're gonna mention is the King's Inn. And what we like a lot about the King's Inn, it is one of the best budget-minded hotels in the area. And what I mean by that is I paid $65 a night to stay in the room. They are very close to the Garden Walk. So you have access to the Cheesecake Factory, Roy's, they have a great pool. The room is really no frills, but it is a nice room. The beds were a little stiff. This hotel is probably at the borderline of walking distance for a lot of people. It is about eight tenths of a mile. And this hotel does offer great customer service. And when I stayed there, parking was $10 a night. Up next is the Wyndham Anaheim. And if you've seen any of our other videos, we usually include the Wyndham because we just love it there. They have amazing customer service. It's a hotel and it's a hotel with free parking, which is pretty much unheard of in the Disneyland area. Another thing that we love about this hotel is they have a Starbucks in the lobby and a bar. So in the morning you can grab your coffee on the go and you can bypass all those crazy lines in the parks for Starbucks. And then in the evening, if you need a nightcap, their bar is there. We've always had really wonderful stays at the Wyndham and we always check that when heading down to the Disneyland area. The next hotel is Home Two Suites. And at the time of filming this video, we have yet to publish a room tour for our Home Two Suites, so look for that soon. What we really like about Home Two Suites is the size of the room. It has a capacity of six people and it is just a huge room. It includes a kitchenette with a full-size refrigerator. Uh, there's just lots of work area, lots of drawers, and the room is just wonderfully laid out. Also, what we really liked about Home Two Suites was the free breakfast. They had a waffle bar, they had a variety of cold cereals, breads. Home Two Suites does share a building with the Garden Inn, but the included breakfast is only open to Home Two Suites guests. It is a hotel that is only about an eight to 11 minute walk to the gates of Disneyland, which is a major perk. The one negative is it is valet only, and when we stayed there, it was $30 a night to park. If you're enjoying our top 10 list, go ahead and hit that like button because it really helps our video out. Up next is the Hotel 414. Now this hotel is a hidden gem, but it is probably right on the cusp of how far people would be willing to walk. That being said, there is a Starbucks on the way from the hotel to the parks. If you're like us and you like your caffeine, it's a great place you can mobile order, grab your Starbucks and head on into the parks and again, bypass all those crazy lines at Disneyland for coffee. This hotel has been amazingly updated they did a fantastic job with their renovation and it was one of the quietest stays that we have had in the Disneyland area in a really long time. Also, the owner was fantastic, made us feel so at home and was so warm and welcoming and we just loved our stay there and we can't wait to stay there again. Another bonus they offer is free parking and the owner did tell us to call them direct to get the best rates. The next hotel is more of a budget-minded hotel and that is the Alpine Inn. And if you've driven by it, you may have been a little shy about booking a room there, but it is a great 
motel and we booked a one bedroom suite there and I think we would book that room again in a heartbeat. We paid about 170 a night for that room. I had offered a great amount of privacy for the adults and the kids loved it because they were in their own room. The room is nicely updated and right next door is Alamo Rent-A-Car. So for some reason, if you're flying in and you need a rental car, there is a place right next door. And then a few doors further down is a 7-Eleven. So if you wanted snacks, alcoholic beverages or drinks, you can go take a quick one to two minute walk down the street. They do have a small resort fee when we stayed there as $5 and free parking. The hotel did say if you are a return visitor, call direct for best pricing. Up next is the Grand Legacy at the park. We recently stayed here and we stayed in a luxury room and that is the room in their newest tower which is in the front of the property and that particular tower is hotel style so the corridors are inside. The rest of the property is motel style where the corridors are outside. We were really impressed with our room. We really loved our stay there. It was also a very quiet stay. Now that being said, we had read some reviews before our trip and we were a little concerned because on the rooftop is the fifth and that is a bar and grill. And we had read some reviews saying that people heard noise from that. That was not our experience, but it's just something to know ahead of time if you do plan on booking in this particular tower. The Grand Legacy also has an amazing pool area. It's great for adults and children. The pool is heated. It has a zero entry, which means it gradually gets steeper as you go into it. And it has an amazing little splash pad area for little kids that our boys just loved when they were little. The next hotel on our list is the Howard Johnson Anaheim. And we're being very specific to buildings one and two because those are the newly remodeled buildings. Three and six are of an older vintage and been a while since we've stayed there. What we liked about the Howard Johnson remodeled rooms, they are really high end and they're very comfortable. They're really nice. We love the colors. It was just a really nice, comfortable room there. The hotel does have a splash pad and water park for the kids. If that is too loud for you, there is a pool that's separate from that area and it's a little bit quieter to hang out in. Now we do recommend that if you are booking at the Howard Johnson, you go ahead and book a view room because you do get a view of Disneyland and if there are fireworks, you will be able to see those fireworks. Howard Johnson's also does have a great customer service. We did recommend the Howard Johnson to another YouTube channel, Bob and Kelly, and they had a wonderful experience there themselves and received great customer service. The one knock on the Howard Johnson since it's been reopened, they now charge for parking, which is really unfortunate because they were one of the few hotels on Harbor near Disneyland that offered free parking. Up next is the Element. This is one of the newer hotels in the area. And if breakfast is your thing, you will love your stay here. We were really impressed with the included breakfast here at the Element. They had pretty much every option you could think of for breakfast available. And the best thing about it was how large the breakfast room was and they kind of split it in half. So one half had all the options and the other half had exactly the same options. There was no line. Everyone could go in and freely get their food. It was really efficient and just really great breakfast. We also really loved the room layout. There was two queen beds, a sofa sleeper, a really big dining table, and a kitchenette that included a two burner stove. We were also really excited to see when we got there that they had electric vehicle charging available. I could not find that information anywhere on their website, but they do have chargers available. The only real negative about this hotel is it is a bit further out. It's probably on the cusp of how far people would want to walk for a walking distance hotel. That being said, the, our family was totally fine with it. Um, others may not be. The next hotel is the closest hotel to Disneyland, and that is Parkview Inn. If you want to stay as close as possible to Disneyland, stay there. And what we liked about Parkview Inn is its price. Generally speaking, it's not too expensive for how close it is to Disneyland. Maybe a five minute walk at the most. It is just slightly closer than the Best Western Mini Suites. Parkview is one of a select few hotels on Harbor that offers free parking. And when you add how close it is to Disneyland, it is a great option to look at. The rooms are nicely remodeled, but we think it's probably an older renovation. Now, don't let that scare you because the rooms are very comfortable and they are nice. 
Up next is the Camelot Inn, and we're also going to group that with the Tropicana. That is because they are the same owner, so they're sister properties. For us, the Camelot slightly edged out the Tropicana, even though the Tropicana is a bit closer distance-wise to the gates of Disneyland. The Camelot, we felt, was just slightly nicer than the Tropicana. We really enjoyed our stay at the Camelot Inn. The layouts of both rooms at the Camelot and the Tropicana are very similar. However, the Camelot just feels a little bit higher end with their furnishings and their bathroom layout. And we just loved our stay there. And one of the things we loved the most was being able to view the fireworks from our room. The way the hotel is situated, all of the rooms face the viewing area for the fireworks. So if you're in the park and you don't wanna deal with the crowds for the fireworks, you can walk back to your hotel and watch them from your room. We will go ahead and leave a link to each one of the room tours that we've mentioned in the description below. Click this link here to view an entire playlist of every hotel we've stayed at. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.